Hey YouTube, I wanted to put together a video. Um, this is going to be a little bit different. I, I want to talk about something that hits a little bit closer to home and uh, and kind of talk about my experiences and uh, uh, the experience of those around me and, and just kind of just talk about some observations and uh, I'm curious you know, to, to hear your impact because I guarantee almost every one of you will, has either gone through this or know somebody. I, I, I'm sure a lot of you know somebody, right? Um, I get a lot of private messages, guys, uh, people reaching out and, you know, I wish I had easy answers. There are none. Um, I want to talk about what I've always felt like is the inverse relationship, the inverse correlation between happiness and expectations. Um, obviously, you know, if you can keep your expectations low and you're <laughs> always pleasantly surprised, you know, I'm not sure if that's the true path to happiness or, or personal fulfillment, but it's something that we all have to find. Um, and unfortunately, we have to find it on our own. And I've always been a big believer that for you to have normal, healthy relationships in your life, you have to be fixed first. You know, it's very difficult if, um, to, to be depressed and, uh, and and to have normal relationships with those around you and not affect them. Um, you know, just talking about my father real quick. I, I've always my father is a pretty depressed guy, and uh, you know, with that comes uh, mood swings and, and and volatility, and it's just always been there. And I, I've seen him make financial misstep after financial misstep in his life. Because he was always trying to change up a variable in his life, not realizing that he was the broken one. You know, I, I think he always felt like it was his environment that was broken, but it was really him. So he would always try to change something up. Let's let's sell the house and move here. Let's sell the next house and move here. And all the time, just never finding happiness because he never realized that it was him. And I always found that sad. And, you know, I, I figured out. I, I kind of figured it out too late in life, I guess. You know, I wasn't exactly thinking about stuff like this in my teens and my early 20s. I was I was consumed with uh, what was next for me. And as I got older, I, I, I kind of reflected on it. I had a discussion with him about it, and it, it really didn't go over well. But, um, you know, I, I work with another guy, and uh, he is very heavily medicated with... Um, with I, I, Honestly, I don't know a lot about antidepressants, guys, um, I, but I, he's on something that will change his mood like you wouldn't even believe because he'll go from really d down and dark and then he'll disappear and come back 20 minutes later and, and just be in, a, in an odd, altered state. Let's put it that way. You know, it's funny because um, the depression rates in, um, in industrialized nations are a lot higher than in third world countries. Um, which is interesting, right? Because all the things that you think will make you happy obviously aren't on, on a macro level. Um, Palladium Ballerina, yeah, first of all, Palladium Ballerina, guys, is, is an absolute sweetheart, a very, very nice person. And um, she actually told me that um, she went to a, a third world country and uh, worked, with, with, worked with children there. And uh, she said, you know, the, the, just the, the, they're all really happy and playing and, and, and living in absolute dirt poverty, um, dire conditions. You know, conditions that as Americans, or even I, I would bet Australians um, and, and people in Europe can't even fathom. And yet here they are just innocently playing and happy without the, the weight of expectations. You know, the materialism... And expectations of materialism are really wired into our kids very early. Um, you, I mean, just think about, you know, for me and, and for a lot of you, it was Saturday morning cartoons. You know, the young guys watching this will be like, huh, Saturday morning cartoons? Aren't they available all day, every day? Um, but, you know, it used to be literally cartoons were only on Saturday mornings, and you'd sit there in front of the TV for three or four hours and just be bombarded with with uh, toy advertisements and and. And materialisms, and of course, uh, materialism, and of course, you wanted it all. And you know, sometimes your parents would uh, capitulate and get it for you, or you know. And, and today, it's the same way. You know, now it's it's uh, you know with Nickelodeon, Disney. I mean, kids are bombarded with the stuff. You know, as much as you let them be, and it's wired in early on that I want these things. They go to school and they hear from their friends, 
I had these things. So therefore, I wanted even more now because not only did I see the advertisement, little Billy also has, um, I don't know, the latest Bakugan stuff. Who knows? Whatever. So it, it's kind of wired in the expectations of materialism early on. And if you ask a kid what they want to be when they grow up, it's funny because they all dream big, don't they? And it's uh, it's always, you know, I want to be a, an astronaut. I want to be a rock star or pop star, really. I want to be uh, a, an athlete. I want to be, you know, my, my son always wanted to be Big Poppy when he was uh, really little. And now he wants to be Jacoby Ellsbury, although that's, I think that, that reality is kind of kicking a little bit. Um, those, those dreaming big, um, that kind of goes away a little bit, right, as they go into high school. But they're still looking at real careers. You rarely hear a high school student say, I want to hold the stop sign, you know, on the road uh, while they're doing construction. You know, you, you never hear a kid in high school say, I want to do a menial job. They're still thinking big. They're, I want to be an electrical engineer. I want to be a business manager. I want computer sciences. I want to be a nurse. You know, they're still, they still have pretty high career aspirations. Now, we all know the economic reality of today, right? And, uh, you know, I believe in free market capitalism, guys. I really do believe in, in capitalism. I think what ends up happening with free market capitalism is, just to make a baseball analogy, um, they burn through a lot of arms to get to the physical freaks that can actually pitch a baseball 95 miles an hour and do it repetitively without hurting themselves. Okay, same thing with capitalism. You need to have our current system to find the Bill Gates and the Steve Jobs. But what about the rest of us that exist here? That's my, that's my very professional bell curve. You know, the system as it's set up allows for innovation and it rewards it. But what about those of us that are kind of in the middle? You know, what is the system set up for like today? Now, you, ha you have these kids that, you know, if they don't go to college, it's very difficult to get a good paying job. It's very difficult. Okay, but even if they go to college now, um, if they don't pick the right degree, they're basically crippling themselves too. And even worse, because if you don't get a degree that's marketable, um, I, I work with a guy who is 26 years old and has just tremendous student loans. I mean, I, we're talking like $80,000. And he went for political science, okay, and pre-law. Now, unfortunately, today, a lot of those pre-law tasks and jobs have been outsourced, and the Internet has taken away. So really, it's not like it used to be. You know, it used to be you'd, you'd go to political science, you'd get a... You know, you'd get an internship or a pre-law job and then work your way up. It, it's just not that way anymore. So now this poor guy is 26 years old with $80,000 in student loan debt, and he's making about 12 bucks an hour. It's, I mean, you know, it, it, he's very fortunate that he has family that allows him to live at home, but it's depressing. It's really depressing. You know, 10% of people are on antidepressants now. How much of that is the built-in expectations of what a middle-class life should be and should look like versus the realities of today? Now, we can certainly argue that, um, that doctors are over-prescribing things, antidepressants. I, I certainly wouldn't disagree with that. Okay, I wouldn't. However, I also understand that if 10% of people in the country are on antidepressants, how many people are depressed and have never sought help for it? We are a depressed society. And I, and I wonder, and I know it's not only one thing, and obviously we're not going to fix it on a YouTube video, but I, I wonder about um, the, the high levels of expectations and um, the, the expectations of being in the middle class today versus what we're actually seeing. I'll, I'll tell you guys this in all honesty. I feel a lot different today than I did two years ago. A lot different. I was finally as a grown man to kind of let go of a lot of the the expectations in my life of materialism and and to say look I want I want the security the financial security of, of having a little bit of wealth and savings and that's more important to me than the latest iPhone because you know Siri now speaks with a Czech dialect 
I, I, I don't feel the need to go out and buy all that stuff. I just don't. And I know that some people kind of laugh at this and say, well, gee, you know, that you're not living life. That's just not true. I am living life, guys. I'm living life, though, in a way that doesn't cost a lot. You know, if you were to, if you were to know me outside of YouTube, you would see somebody that is having fun. But I'm having fun without opening my wallet. If, if that makes sense. You know, it really irritates me when I watch CNBC and they'll have an analyst on and they'll say, you know, company X has uh, $40 billion in cash. What are they going to do with that hoard? Will it be a special dividend? Will they buy another company? I never, ever, ever hear anybody say, well, why don't they give the workers a little bit of money? You know, all the people that go to go, you know, punch the clock every day to help give this company this much money. It's always about executives. And guys, this is not me railing on the rich. I can't stand this whole class warfare argument that anytime you question this stuff, oh, you're just jealous of the rich. No, I'm not. I'm inspired by the rich. But I, I'm a little bit angry right now at the way that things are going in society, some of the trends that we're seeing, and how everything seems to favor the rich in a, in a way that is just, it's not reasonable for those of us who exist here which is almost everybody. Another trend that, that bothers me, and you know, I wonder where this is gonna go, is you know, people need to be challenged. We're a very complacent society today. I don't think man is meant to be complacent, and yet we kind of are. And we're also becoming detached. Do you guys have any friends, or it might even be you guys, I mean, it may even be some of you, that literally has a smartphone and they're looking at that thing 24-7? I have a friend that he can't even have lunch with us without sitting there and digging that out and checking his Facebook. It's ridiculous. You know, I always tell him, bud, put it down. Have a discussion with us. Let's talk about this, that, or the other thing. And it, it's always going back to Facebook. What the hell is on Facebook that is so important that you can't even eat a sandwich without looking at it? People are becoming more detached from physical contact, from face-to-face -face interaction. You know, now, I mean, you know, Skype is great, you know, for, for making contact with people from all over the world, really. But, you know, Skyping friends that you, you should be hanging out with is a, is a different animal. And I wonder where this is headed with, with, with Facebook and Skype and people, you know, <coughs> becoming more detached from relationships and I, I think that has to have a, a psychological um, effect on people when they're not when they don't feel as loved when they don't feel physical contact you know I don't know kind of kind of an odd rant I guess um, and we're getting a little bit long and we're obviously not going to come up with any answers it's just uh, it's something that's always kind of bothered me um, I, I see my, my kids are very different. My, um, my daughter is very social, and my son is weighted down with very high expectations of himself, and, and it bothers me. And you know what? Who knows? Maybe that will bode well for him in the future, that he is a perfectionist and expects every, you know 100% of himself. And if he doesn't meet those expectations, he's really crushed. I just feel like it's an unfair um, burden that he places on himself, whereas my daughter is just very happy-go-lucky. And... Uh, and, you know, I, I don't know how that bodes for the future, but I, of course we'll see. But I always try to kind of work with my son and, and, and try to make him realize that everything doesn't have to be perfection. All right, guys, um, I'll talk to you later. I, I really, I'm kind of, a, I kind of can't wait to hear some of your reactions. All right, talk to you later.